No one, from the young to the old, has ever experienced anything like the coronavirus pandemic. But while it's dominating our news feeds, a lot of the biology is often skimmed over. So we're here to explore what the science can actually tell us. Coronavirus was first discovered at the end of 2019 in mainland China, when a cluster of people with severe respiratory illness were admitted to hospital. Like most viruses, coronavirus consists of three structures. A genetic code covered in a layer of protein that's wrapped in a fatty envelope. Its goal is pretty straightforward too. It wants to copy itself over and over again. But the virus can't do this by itself. It needs to infect a host. And this is where we come in. The first step in any infection is transmission. Coronavirus is transmitted in the droplets that are released when an infected person coughs, talks, or sneezes. Once the virus has entered the body, it hijacks the cells that line the lungs, tricking them into stopping what they're doing and making copies of the virus instead. These viruses then go on to infect other nearby cells, or they're released into the air to potentially infect somebody else. Now, of course, our immune system isn't just going to sit back and let all of this happen without putting up a fight. When a cell becomes infected, it releases signals to the immune system, which then tries to fight the infection. In fact, many of the symptoms experienced during an infection aren't directly caused by the virus. They're a result of our body's immune response to the virus. For example, our bodies produce a fever to try and inactivate the virus. We cough to force unwanted viruses out of our lungs. And we feel fatigued as our bodies encourage us to sleep so that more energy can be used to fight the infection. So, in most people, the immune system manages to clear the virus on its own without further treatment. However, this isn't true for some people. In the war between the virus and our immune system, healthy cells are damaged in the crossfire. In some cases, the lungs become so damaged that we can't get enough oxygen into our blood. This is called pneumonia, and patients often require ventilation to survive. As the infection goes on, our immune system begins to weaken from all the fighting. This makes us vulnerable to other infections, which can lead to respiratory failure at best and spread to other organs at worst, causing them to shut down too. Putting all of that together, we can see that the coronavirus infection has the potential to be very dangerous and even life-threatening. Now, to get a better sense of how worried we should be, let's compare to other viruses out there. If we graph the deadliness of major viruses against their contagiousness, we can see viruses with a high fatality rate up here, and those that are very contagious over here on the right. This shows coronavirus to be 10 times more deadly than the seasonal flu and twice as contagious, but it isn't particularly dangerous relative to what viruses are actually capable of. The fear of coronavirus actually comes back to the fact that it's a novel virus. Before the end of 2019, no one had ever caught it, and so absolutely nobody had any immunity to protect them from it. On top of this, we have no vaccines to prevent people from catching it, and no antivirals to treat them when they do. This has led us to where we are today, a world scrambling to deal with one of the worst pandemics in a hundred years. The development of vaccines and antivirals takes time, but while we wait for them, science can guide our behaviour to slow the spread. Social distancing is key here. This means staying at home when possible and maintaining a 1.5 metre distance to others. The droplets that carry coronavirus are too heavy to stay in the air for long. So as long as we stay outside the 1.5 metre radius, the viruses will fall down before we can inhale them. Hand washing is also key. Remember that fatty outer layer that we talked about at the start? Well, soap works by dissolving fat, which is bad news for the virus since this makes it totally inactive. Alcohol-based hand sanitizer will also do the trick. And all of the other recommendations come back to these two points as well. Coughing into your elbow prevents droplets from getting into the air. Avoiding touching your face can stop transmission if you have touched an infected surface. And cleaning frequently touched surfaces can remove the virus if it's sitting there. Overall, while coronavirus is dangerous, science is on our side when it comes to slowing and eventually stopping the spread. 
Stay safe, stay home, and stay positive. We'll see you next time.